We are back downstairs and I know that I've had quite a bit of terrarium content recently between doing up the big tank terrarium. However, there's something else that needs to be done and that is my original carnivorous plant terrarium project. Now, we've been doing quite a bit of clearing out the house and, you know, getting little bits and bobs of furniture to just kind of, I don't know, fix bits of the house that we've been ignoring. And we got a new piece of furniture for our living room and to be honest, the tank just doesn't really fit anywhere and I don't really like the way that it looks, unfortunately. So it's also gone quite unruly, which is really cool in some ways. Some of the plants are doing really, really well. However, I think that it just is time to change the situations. I don't really want this terrarium in this room, to be honest, anymore. And I also don't really have anywhere else to put it where it will fit well. So I think it's time. I mean, I've had it for quite a long time. From what I've seen for people that do terrariums um, and are into that whole hobby, there does come a point where it becomes just so kind of overgrown and needs to be either redone or rethought or whatever, and I think that we're at that stage with this. However, I'm not going to redo the terrarium because the tank just doesn't really fit anywhere in my house, like I said. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take out just a select few plants that are doing really well, and I'm going to repot them into something. <laughs> so one option is this clay pot that has no drainage hole. If some of you have followed me for a long time, you may remember when I did this. This was my Lithops little um, display thing, grown from seed on the 31st of January 2021. And this particular one I actually bought, so, um, which is, I don't believe that's a Lithops. But as you can see, they are no longer alive. I have done a terrible job taking care of them. Some of them popped up again, some of them didn't. It's not just that they're dormant, they are actually dried up and dead. It's just taking up space on the shelf and this is on like the prime shelf real estate that is just under my spider farmer light. So I think what I'm going to do instead is take this out and see if I can make more of a kind of a bog situation in here. I do know it's a clay pot, which is not great, but I think I would be able to keep up with it and it does have quite high light as well. So I think that whatever carnivorous plants I take out of the terrarium today will do pretty well in this. Other options I have are just two plastic pots of different shapes and sizes. Um, that I may want to use as well. So that is what we're going to do. I'm going to show you what it currently looks like now, to sh I guess as a bit of an update and to show you where we've gotten. There is quite a bit of moss growing. There is some beautiful native ferns that popped up. I threw in quite a bit of Irish native plants that are from bog habitats as well and some of those have succeeded, some of them have not. So I'm going to show you what it looks like now and then we're going to take out whatever we want to keep. Now we are beside a window so apologies for being backlit. I'm going to try and fix that here. But I was looking at this nice piece of furniture that we got that we needed for this area. Let me just turn up the brightness. And to be honest, I just thought this will look far better without this contraption. Also, of course, the light and fan situation could look a lot nicer and doesn't look very nice. It is very practical. And I actually had somebody ask me recently, how was the mother light doing? I'm still, have the same thoughts as I did back then. I think it's done a fantastic job. The plants have acted like they've had great light. I've never had any issues. Um, it works absolutely perfectly. So obviously this light will have to be repurposed. I'm thinking of using it for a dark corner of the house that I wouldn't normally put plants. And yeah, that is essentially it. So let's show you what it looks like. I'll take off the fan. Have a beautiful flower here for one of the sundews. They kind of flower like that and they open one by one. 
Um, so this is what it's looking like. As you can see, it's quite unruly and mad. So we have a group of sundews here in the corner. They're all doing pretty well. Um, then we have ones that are kind of in a depression <laughs> um, that get a lot more water and they are doing very well. You can see that they do indeed pick up insects in here. We have loads and loads and loads of springtails in this little community and some small little flies get in every now and again. Then we have this uh, butterwort, Pingicula, that is really happy and has been pushing out its new summer growth. Um, these are the ferns that have popped up that are really beautiful. We also have the tiny butterwort there in the corner. We have various bits of moss. This is not the moss that I actually planted. The sphagnum never did very well in here. I would try to replenish populations and they just died out. There's a tiny bit of it growing there. But yeah, whether that was, I assume, probably a pH situation that was the issue rather than watering, but you know. Um, then we had our Venus flytrap, which was doing really, really well until quite recently. I think either it may be wanting to go into a dormant period or it is just dying off for some other reason. Then on the other side here, we don't have as much going on. We have lovely little fern again. Um, and that is kind of it other than those sundews there on the side. Um, this plant that's growing everywhere is actually, now you can see it flying, flowering, is actually an invasive plant in Ireland and as you can see it is kind of acting like an invasive plant, it is kind of covering everything. So that is not something I'm going to be carrying out of here but we'll dispose of very carefully. But yeah, I originally thought that that was a native plant called bog pimpernel because I hadn't seen it flower and I only had a small little piece of it. But then quickly discovered that was not the case. But yeah, that is how it's doing. I mean, these pieces of wood, once I take this out and I see how it looks, I'm definitely going to keep these for some other project. As far as what I want to take out of here and what I want to repot, the two bingicula and the sundews are really what I want to take out of here. Um, possibly the Venus flytrap, although I do think that it is kind of dying back. And some moss as well, so that is the plan. This is what it looks like. Yes, I do think it is beautiful. It is a lovely nature masterpiece, but it just doesn't fit here anymore. <laughs> I don't think it looks very nice with the light and everything, like I said. I definitely would like to do redo something like this in the future. I learned so much from this terrarium, like a huge, huge amount about designing it, about issues that I came across with mold and stuff at the beginning, what is actually good for these specific plants, that kind of stuff. So I think that the next one I do in the future would be far better than this. But I would still love to have something, some kind of peatland bog situation indoors because I think it's been really cool to watch it evolve over time. And yeah, so let's prepare what we're going to put them in and then pick out what we want to keep from here. So I do just have my regular soil mix here and I'm just going to pick out some stones in this that I like. Um, a lot of this was really sandy. If you can see, I'm gonna zoom in. I really did like the way that this looked. Um, however, I just did not, I honestly just didn't water it enough. I think because it didn't have a drainage hole and because these plants don't like to be waterlogged, I was a bit afraid of that. And that probably held me back from actually watering them enough. This thing should not be alive. Like, it is so neglected. <laughs> as far as the soil that's in here, it was really made to be for succulents, so I'm not really going to reuse any of this, I don't think. Um, but I think I'm just going to compost this, to be very honest. I think that's all the rocks that I want, if I want to use them again. Let me just compost this. So I'm just, the yes, this is my normal soil mix. I probably should have made something a bit more boggy and it does have organic content, but 
I am planning to use mostly stuff that is already in the terrarium so that they don't get as much of a shock. Right, let's get our plants then. So this is what we are working with. There's quite a bit more here than I will be able to fit in. So I'm thinking I'll do a second one in one of these and see how we go. Just see if we can get this big one. quite afraid of messing these up. Um, what else could we put here? We could put a small little fern. I might take some soil from what we had there. Right, I'm not going to spend so much time packing and making this perfect because I feel like it will take some settling time anyway. So I'm going to just try and cover as much as possible with a layer of moss and then we'll water it in and we'll just see how it goes. Yeah, I think that is good for now. I think I'm pretty happy with that. We will of course water it all in and rinse everything off. It's how that looks. Bit messy, but I think it's better to not mess with them so much and just wait for them to settle. So the remaining bits, I think I will try to fit in just one pot here.
The downside obviously of moving these now to pots is that I did have an ecosystem in there that is no longer really going to exist in the same way like with the springtails and other little bugs that kind of found their way and multiplied um, which I do think does help with the health of the plants they're not necessarily going to have that anymore but it is what it is. I just hope that they survive this way after being in a much more favorable environment so far. But that is the risk that I'm taking, you know? That is very messy, but that is how we're doing this. <laughs> so it's essentially just sun juice with the little fern. But yeah, it's cute. So I'm going to rinse these off, water them in, place them where they're gonna be placed and we'll see how they do. Alright, so that is it for this video. A pretty quick one, but just a chore that I needed to do and that I wanted to film. So this is where they are currently. Fingers crossed that they do well in this scenario. I really don't want these select plants to actually die because of deciding to get rid of the tank. So let's hope, let's really hope they do well. But yeah, that is it and honestly, that area looks so much better now. And I also now have a light that is free to be used on some other plant, which is always a good thing. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you very soon in the next one. Bye.